about that whole exchange there? Well, I, so I remember we had a receiver that had a knee injury. I mean, I didn't know who he was. I just knew he had a knee injury, and this guy was going to be on our team. So we watched a little bit of tape on him, looked good. But always, you know, brand new, inheriting a team and all those things like that, or players, you know, guys injured, you know, has an injury right out of the gate. And, you know, I was just at his high school. One, one of the things, you know, where he came from, Narbonne High School, he won, made a huge impression there. You know, we were, I probably can't say that and all that, but the teachers there, the, the AD there and all that, I mean, they speak so highly to him. I didn't know all that. I really didn't know all that until just a few, you know, last week, to be honest <laughs> with you. But that was, that was really good to hear. It's his senior year, but that's the kind of player that we were getting. And when he got here, the recovery from his knee, I mean, it took him a while. And we got him where we were rehabbing him. We got him where you know, hopefully we get him back into shape a little bit. And that was something early on in his career he really had to work on. He's done a great job. You know, his habits now, the weight room habits, the eating habits, like all the things it takes to be a successful athlete, he's done all that. And I think because of a little bit of his history and adversity and what he's gone through and where he is right now, I don't think many things affect him. He's just, he's been a leader on our team. He, he's been playing really well. Um, he knows the progress he's made. And he's graduated. I mean, all these things have just happened for him that probably early on were stacked against him. I was talking to him today. You know, that room that he's been in the last six years or five years or whatever. Forever. Um, there have been so many of the guys that have come through that have played as true freshmen. Mm -hmm. And he had to sit a year because of his knee, had to sit another year yep. academically. To You know, he's like, the cool thing to do now is to transfer. Um, right. You know, to, to wait as long as he did and to see what's sort of come of it the last couple of years were pretty cool to see. It is. It, it's it's different. You know, I mean, that, all the adversity and what you talked about. I don't, you know, I know there's there's guys, we, we kind of see that right now. I mean, one guy leaves. I don't think everybody's leaving at this point. I still think guys work hard. I still think they understand they got to keep working to get to where they want to go. But he's had to do that. And that was never, never one time did he ever question at least to me, you know, should I be doing this? Is this the right place? I remember having a conversation with him. I remember having a conversation with his dad, just going, all right, what, you know, where's he at? And it was one of those, just what do I need to do? And what's what's going to help me get on the field? What's going to help me kind of take that next step? And we had a conversation that was really good, and it was one of those that you need to have. And then from that point on, really everything that we talked about that he wanted to get done, he started to do, and it showed up. And you know, I think at this point now, it's still early in the year, but he's he's ready, he's prepared every single day. He's, he's got, you know, an excellent attitude on, you know, what we're doing and how we're doing it. I think he's great for that room because he has experience. You know, he brings perspective to that room. So all those things have been key factors. We had a couple what have you seen this season from, from Curtis Weaver? I know, obviously, uh, he's not going to be a surprise to anybody this year. I don't know if teams are blocking him differently or, you know, what have you seen from him so far? Um, no, not a surprise. I don't think that. I mean, last year, and, and we kind of felt that way too, as he developed throughout the season, um, a lot of really good things showed up. No different this year. He's still a young player, and this that's the one thing. I mean, what you know, it's kind of one of those things, everybody's a freshman, they do something really well, and you still got to keep developing. That doesn't change. Um, everybody you're playing against, they get better. You got to keep getting better. He's done that. Uh, I think he understands the game plan better than he has from being in it. I think each week he prepares himself better than he did last year. And then, you know, the way he's playing, he's still playing fast, he's still playing physical, but we played three games. So it's still early in the season. He's still a guy that's developing. Um, he knows that. And I think that's the best part. I see more maturity, just like you do with all young guys, just knowing kind of the process and what it takes. And he can play. You know, now it's just a matter of those reps, opportunities, and, and cutting them loose. But he's handled it well. That room's got good players in it. And that's one of the areas on our team. We got really good depth. We got really good players, and it's kind of like the football. I mean, you can only have one guy out there at a time. So what are we doing? You might have two, maybe. Um, it's just a matter of how those guys work with each other. And I think for the talent we have in there, how they've prepared and how they've worked with each other, has been pretty good. The guys, a couple guys, talked about this being championship week again and starting conference play. And yep. you know, when, when just what changes when you get back into conference play and you, you know the opponent, you know, the, it's the common opponents again, and just. That, you know, now that you're both playing for the same goal, what, what, how, how much, you know, I guess, what, what changes? How are things a little different once you get into conference play? Well, it is. It's, I think every time you get, the goal is to win the conference, and our goal is still intact. So you get into division play, you get into conference play, 
it really is that. It's really about that one game. You've got to win that game to move on to the next one and still have a chance at the end of the year to achieve your goal. So the big picture is in place. The mindset is this is what we have to accomplish, and, and it matters. It's key to our end goal at the end of the year. The common opponent, you think about these guys, you know, some three, four years played against some of the same guys. And so whatever that battle was last year, those guys remember it. You know, that game comes back up. They're going to review the game that they played last year. They're going to remember where they won and lost. You know, they're going to want to get back or they're going to want to continue the success, whatever it is. You just go back and kind of relive that a little bit, and then you move on to, all right, where's their team at now? Where are we at now? What's the situation that we're in? And it's time to go out there and try to accomplish it. So I think every team in America that's got a conference is trying to win it. So it starts this week, and we play Wyoming. We're on the road, good football team. We have history with them. And, um, you know, last time we didn't win, you know, we were there. So we got to go back on the road. We know that we have to play in that environment. It's going to be a great environment, great atmosphere, crowd, all those things, and our guys got to be ready to play. And these games all count. They all matter as far as what we're trying to accomplish at the end of the year. When you came in here, you know, you hired Junior as your wide receivers coach, and I know it's been two years now, but you brought Eric Kisa here, who was a quarterback. Uh, it seems like your receiver room is as deep as ever, and I'm just curious how you thought that this whole thing would work out, and did you picture you know, a quarterback teaching through his eyes of trying to help receivers in kind of a different way, I guess? Yeah, you know, I, I haven't really thought of it like that, and that's because when I my first coaching position was tight ends, and my my first real coaching opportunity was a GA with uh, the old line, and you know, you think you know everything at quarterback, then you get with the old line, and you realize you don't know anything. You know, that's the reality of it. And so, um, Junior played it, and he did a great job, and, and obviously he elevated, and that's you know what you want to see guys do. They get better at what they're doing. He certainly did that. And then Coach Keesaw, he's been around, he's been in those positions, he's coached quarterbacks, he's coached wide receivers, but flat out, he can coach. That's the bottom line. And not only that position, I know he's gonna take a lot of pride in that and teaching it and know the details of it. And just because you didn't play it doesn't mean you can't detail it up. But then what he brings to the offensive staff, that expertise and calling plays and being a coordinator. And I know when I was here, you know, I had Brent Pease and he had been a coordinator you know, he was at Kentucky and, and Baylor and some of those other places when he came here. I'd never done it. And so to have a guy like that to lean on and some of the things that he'd been through, that helped me as a coordinator. So I think having a room like that, you know, is important. And, you know, the same thing on the defensive side. When you can find guys that have been there and you know, kind of been through it in maybe some of those situations, I think that helps you. With, with quick, quick fun one. Are, yeah. are, you, are you a fan of beat juice at all? Or, or do you believe in that at all? Do I believe in what? The beat juice theory of Wyoming. The beet juice theory. Do I believe in that? <laughs> I believe in beet juice. Yeah, I personally drink that. Um, Can it help I have, you at altitude at all? I've never gotten tired there. You know, <laughs> I, I haven't done anything. I would say that, you know, it's funny because I say you can do anything for four hours. And I think the players look at me like, yeah, you can coach for four hours on the sideline. <laughs> I've been a player too. Um, I do. You know, I think there's, I really do. I mean, to answer your question seriously, I do. I think there's things that physically, and maybe not specifically for football and things like that, but I just think nutrition, I think it's important. I think things that we can talk to our guys about nutrition-wise can help. And if it's beet juice, if it's other things and stuff like that, I don't, I don't think that hurts anybody. Um, and to me, I, I kind of enjoy it. That's something I enjoy talking about and, and having in our program. With the, with the, uh, the, the red shirt rule, I, I know when you first heard about it, you were really excited about it. Yeah. And I know when we talked back in July, you weren't 100% sure how you were gonna utilize it. Yeah. What is your philosophy on that now? And then also, there's been the unattended consequence now you've seen, you know, seen it, the yeah. programs, guys leaving. Yeah, well, that one, so honestly, I mean, that was something, when the, when the rule was passed, I never thought about, I, I thought about it as all the young players. All right, this is going to be something for all of your incoming guys and how we're going to utilize it. Now, we're still early in the season, so we have all these games now to, to play with with some of these guys that are quote unquote red shirting right now. There's still that opportunity. Some of the guys that played for us, they're going to play. Right. And so that really doesn't change it. Now, how do we utilize them as we get into conference play? Uh, as far as players utilizing this, the four games now, you know, I'm going to use my red shirt year and go somewhere else. The bottom line to me, I mean, maybe that's one thing, and I, it's probably a lot of outside noise with those players. You know, they're all kind of looking at the gamesmanship of using the rule, and they're telling them what to do. If a player, you know, if they're not happy and they want to go somewhere, they're probably going to transfer anyway. So I'm, I wouldn't change the rule. I don't think it's, I think it's a great rule. I think there's some things that we may look at, you know, 
they, they may look at and review and say, was this the intent of what we were trying to get done? Not necessarily, but it is what it is. And it's far outweighed, you know, some of those unintended consequences right now, in my opinion, because we're going into game four right now. So all these guys that have played, you know, we could really make a decision after this. Right. If we wanted to, or what we want to do, red shirt wise and all that. And, and then we decide from there.